This is a world and a story that could be told in a feature length film or a series. But this chapter right now is a short film to slowly introduce this world. Guns of Purgatory is this powerful, visceral experience about these two men's journey of vengeance. Um, and they're trying to seek retribution and immoral justice for some atrocities that were committed against them. What is this transformation that pushes them into the world of Guns of Purgatory? To me, the moment I read the script, I didn't feel like I was reading a Western. It was a setting of moral injustice, which could happen at any time. It's happening now. Action, action. <laughs> it just happens to be that Guns of Purgatory happens in this world of 1870s, post-Civil War, and we can use the Civil War era to answer to why these men would act this way. We wanted to elevate it to a place where it really, really punches people and really connects people to, to the emotional me message that we're sending out to them. You would do anything to survive in this world and do anything to protect your family, do anything to move on, or you're completely numb to everything around you. You're a man who's got nothing left to live for. We've had about three months of prep time. Preparation and character development was uh, extensive. It just comes from my planner in my head. Throughout the pre-production process, seeing this world develop through all departments okay. and their okay. empowerment to tell cross. Guts of Purgatory the way they want to tell it. It's not stepping onto set, you're stepping into the Behringer homestead. You're stepping into the Dead Horse Saloon. That's that place. It's amazing to see how people from that department read a script and can actually visualize what's in that room. You can see the process of these artists through every corner of these sets and every inch of these characters. Our location was in Longview, Alberta at the John Scott Ranch. It was the perfect location. This is one of those things we wanted to show off to um, really show everyone like Alberta is a kick-ass place to film. This is, you know, some of the, the areas and locations we are like literally top five most beautiful places in the world. Prior to starting the film, Mark, Ramon and Kalen were working to learn specific techniques and learn how to be more comfortable on a horse not necessarily for the screen, but just within their characters and find that attachment. You'll learn very quickly what sort of person you are on a horse. I can get the feel for where that dead roll is. That horse knows when you're scared and knows when you're uncomfortable, knows when you're off balance, but it also knows when you're standing tall and feel powerful, it will move faster. Whoa. That's very much what this world of the 1860s and 70s would be like. It knows when you're scared and knows when it can take advantage of you. You done good. There you go. It's really amazing what Dietra has done with the wardrobe and her focus and her direction has been making sure that all these men and women in this world aren't in costumes, they're in their clothes. When we went in for a wardrobe fitting, she had I didn't see anything before, and, and she showed me it. We did a, a try on, and I was it. It was done. That's the, the magical thing about wardrobe, is seeing these actors come out wearing the skin of the character. Wow. And something changes in just how they view themselves, how they feel. There's just some amazing things that happen when an actor just puts on a jacket. It really just kind of puts you into the uh, environment of the time. So that was, that was key for us. 
every texture and piece of clothing they're wearing has a specific story in itself and is very specific to that character. Wouldn't want to turn myself. They look traveled, they look worn. Makeup was huge. It was, it was extremely important to Ramon and I to have, again, an authentic look and feel to this piece. And we want to express the grit and the rawness and the, even the violence. Um, so again, details were extremely important. Sharon Tuhi and I talked about thick layers of mud and dirt being present within their faces and within every crevice of their body. There's some very distinctive markings that we're implying some backstory and it's amazing what one scar can do to a person. On camera or in a story, you look on, at someone with a scar, you know that they've been through something prior to this. I was in chair for about an hour and a half for the scar, for the scar on the head and the scar on the cheek. It really pushes them into making decisions based off what has happened to them in the past. So I wanted to show that as much as we could through mud, blood, cuts, scars, whatever we could do to show that what they're doing in this moment is a direct response out of what has happened to them in their past. Guns of Purgatory and the approach that we've had with the violence, we wanted to make sure that every bullet was answered for. When that hammer of that pistol is pulled back, it's going to be thrown at somebody for a reason. Once I read the script, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. This is us. It's fun. No, no, leave her. There you go. I'll squeeze the trigger. Get it down. Do it again. Working with Johnny Jones and his background in firearms, it was very important that all our actors who are bringing these characters to life know that that pistol is an extension of them to answer to violence or wrongdoing to them. That might work. It's really passionate to me to make it look right. You know, make, make every character different so they got their own personality is what I try to do. I got him for you boys. He's here. We spent a lot of time at the gun range. We spent a lot of time out shooting at targets to just hear and feel what a bullet sounds like in different environments, but also just hear and feel what it sounds like throughout your body. It's amazing what that first gunshot felt like and how it changed everything in the script. You ready to go? If you're working with Johnny, you're gonna learn something new like every day. <laughs> or hear a funny story. Or hear a funny story. Or hear a really funny story. <laughs> <laughs>
that we can't handle. <laughs> I've always been a big fan of extremely soft light and really delicate moments. Ma'am? Nick Thomas and I have always been extremely good collaborators. Sure. We talked countless like times about shooting this in natural light because this is a time where they only had flame. They had candlelight and kerosene. Nick was able to work with his grip and gaffer team extensively, headed by Jamie and Anish, to create these essentially outdoor studios that would wrap our locations within and be able to control the lighting. I think if I rotate the ladder and pack it up on that. It's very much lighting it like a play and to allow the actors to move within this environment and bring out the pieces of the story they wanted to, but also really feed off one another. So Nick really worked hard with his whole team to make the lighting as unobtrusive as possible. Working constantly and with every aching muscle they have to put this setting into the world of Guns of Purgatory. Oh, easy boy. Won't be long now. When you pair two art forms, something incredible happens. So working off the script, the Boreal Sons, Evan and Regan and Zach were able to write off the emotions they were feeling to create a bedrock of this story. So the score is really, really challenges what you are truly feeling. It's not pushing us to cry or pushing us to be angry or scared. You drop this. And that's what's incredible about music in general. It allows you just to put this extra layer, this extra piece of texture and this other note to what's happening inside that the camera can't always capture. This is a very heartfelt, um, emotional journey for everybody here. What I've felt in the past with all the projects we've been a part of is it's over way too soon. And the moment you rap, you start missing those characters. And you wonder where they are and what they're going through now. By the time the camera stops rolling, I'm going to keep wondering what's happening to those characters.